Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, saints of God. Welcome to Life Application Word on Wednesday. It's been a great day today, and uh, we thank you for joining us on this virtual Bible study. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. We just thank God for another day. We thank God for his loving kindness that's better than life. And we thank God for uh, new mercies that he has promised us for each new day. Let us begin our Bible study with prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to see another day. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your protection and your provision. Heavenly Father, thank you for being our Father. Thank you for choosing us to be your children. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blood covering uh, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, and the blood covering that covers us, Lord God, and, and protects us and keeps us, Lord God. We thank you for your anointing, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit that gives us strength, Lord God. We thank you for all good and perfect gifts that you have sent from above. We honor you, Heavenly Father. Now we ask, Lord God, that you would be with us on tonight during this <clears throat> Bible study. Heavenly Father, bless me and anoint me to teach your word. Bless and anoint the hearer to be hearers and doers of your word. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us go to the book of Matthew, chapter number five. Matthew, chapter number five. And I'm going to read into your hearing verses 13 through 16. This is not the King James Version, but it's, it's, it's close, so you could be able to follow easily. Matthew chapter 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt, if the salt loses its flavor, how shall, then, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. But on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God in heaven. Uh, historically, this is a part of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus has uh, seen the multitudes gather. And the Bible says he went uh, off to another place and the disciples came with him. Jesus was not getting away from the people, but Jesus was setting up this moment to teach as his disciples. It didn't I don't think it just said the 12 disciples, but his disciples came and, and he taught his disciples and I, I do believe that the purpose is for for Jesus to teach his disciples and his disciples to go out and, and teach the people but uh, the Bible says Jesus sat which was the appropriate position in the synagogue for the teacher to sit and the students to stand around so the Bible says Jesus sat and this is uh, the part of the sermon that's right after what we uh, passionately call the Beatitudes and the Beatitudes are simply the characteristics uh, that Jesus is informing us that we should have in order to live a blessed life. But here in uh, verse number 13, uh, Jesus is going a little further, telling us what our now, what our jobs and our duties are. Um, and I wanted to talk about this on tonight simply because of uh, an interaction that I had with a young lady that I, I, I don't know her relationship with Christ, but what she told me, it really pierced me and it really hurt me to my heart, hurt me to the core of being a Christian because she was talking about how she was uh, just pretty much verbally abused and mistreated by this uh, another lady who, you know, always talks about being a Christian. Now, her uh, not being a Christian, I don't, I don't believe, I didn't get the feel that she was a Christian, but her not being a Christian, coming in contact with someone who always taught Christ. I always say here at Assembly uh, Chapel, don't talk Christ, be Christ. Don't talk Christian, be Christian. Don't talk godly, be godly. Because one, once you once you label yourself a Christian, once you put uh, the, the stamp God's name, Jesus' name on your life, and you say you're a Christian, you're now under the microphone glass. You, you are now being watched closely. And people expect you to behave differently than the unsaved and the, the the last thing that the lady said she was talking to someone else I, I heard about the story uh, the last thing that she said was after she told her about all of the verbal abuse and the nasty behavior and the and the, and the nasty uh, attitude that the lady had towards her 
the last thing she said, and she was genuinely confused as the story was told to me. She said, and, and I thought that she was a Christian. Is this the way Christians are supposed to behave? And my answer back to her, I sent message and I answered back to her was, no, this is not the way a Christian is to behave. And so since then, since that conversation, I wanted to to go over, you know, for the next several weeks, how we are, what, what God is expecting us and how we are to behave. Um, and, and sad to say the same lady today, I heard from her today. And the first thing I heard about her today was that she had heard something about a pastor in nearby Martinsville who had three mistresses and that was a whole nother mess. And now uh, this, this poor baby is really confused about Christianity. And so instead of me just talking about it and complaining about it, I'm going, I, I want to do something about it because the only way you can change is first you have to change yourself. And after you change yourself, you know, you want you want to help others. And so I, I want to walk closer with God. I want to be a better representative of God. And so should all of us. And after we're better representatives of God, we need to start treating people better. We need to show people what being a Christian is truly about. We need to show people uh, what being a child of God is truly about. And if you are not ready to conduct yourself as a Christian, shut up, leave people alone. Get your how get yourself in order, like Sister Gladys said. Get your business straight first before you go out and and uh, misrepresent the kingdom of God. So here Jesus is saying in verse number thirteen uh, that the followers first of all should be like salt. He says, "You're the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses flavor, how shall it be seasoned? How shall the earth be seasoned if the salt loses its flavor?" It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. The disciples are like salt because we are precious. We're, we're, we are disciples now. We are disciples. We are students of Jesus Christ. We are to be, our knowledge of Jesus is to discipline us in our everyday walk and our everyday action. In Jesus' day, salt was valued as a commodity. Salt was something that was very, very important. Salt would stop corrosion. Stop, salt was used to uh, to stop uh, things from going bad. Salt was used, uh, as we see here, uh, Roman soldiers were sometimes paid with salt. That's how important salt was, giving rise to the phrase, worth his salt. Uh, disciples are like salt because we have a preserving influence. Salt was used to preserve and salt was used to uh, help stop corruption and, and things of that nature. De decay is the word I'm looking for. Corruption and decay. Salt was used to preserve, and it still is, and salt was used to stop corruption and decay. Bear with me for a moment. Christians should have a preserving influence on our culture. Here is the problem that I want to get to. First of all, we are to have a preserving influence influence what are we preserving we are preserving the love of god here on this earth as the love of god is is decaying it as you saw i think it says 21 days ago now the the, the insurrection at the capitol building you know love is 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 slowly decaying in this earth and who are the ones that are charged by god a charge that we have to keep and a god to glorify everlasting souls can say it every day who are the ones here that is charged and duty bound to do the will of God here on earth. So his kingdom can come on earth as it is in heaven. It's us, it's you and I. It's the saved. It's the ones that gave our lives to Christ. It's the ones that, that, that we say, uh, for God we live and for God we die. But, you know, for God, we need to treat people better. You don't just treat family well. You don't just treat other church members well. You don't just treat other Christians well. We are here to shine our light. Light doesn't need light, amen, but darkness needs light. That's why it's so very important that we, we go out and let our light shine. I'm getting ahead of myself with the light, but being the salt of the earth, this is why we need to, to be an influence because Jesus is saying that, you know, salt is a, is a savior. Salt is a savior. Uh, it, it, it adds flavor, amen, to, to whatever it is we are eating to be very practical about it. 
And if the salt is going to taste exactly like the food is, then what good is the salt? If we are going to blend in with the world, then what good are we as Christians? If we're not going to be trans, uh, transformed by the renewing of our minds, then what good are we to the kingdom of God? If we're going to think like the world, act like the world, and do everything like the world, you know, where 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 is our purpose? What what good is it for us to even be here as Christians? If we're just going to blend right in, if we're not going to add something different to the situation. Amen. So here it says that uh, the disciples, if they are true to their calling, make the earth a pure, more palatable place. We are here to make the earth a more, uh, a, a truer, a more perfect place. Amen. We are here to change attitudes. We are here to change disciplines. We are here to change the way people act and think in this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Um, the salt loses its flavor. Then it is good for nothing. Salt must keep its saltiness. It, in order to be of value, salt must keep its saltiness. When it is no good as salt, it is trampled underfoot. In the same way, too many Christians lose their flavor. Then this is good. This is where I was going. This is what I was talking about. Too many Christians lose our flavor and become good for nothing. How do we lose our flavor? We lose our flavor by distancing ourselves with God. We lose our flavor by leaning more towards the world and their ways than we do upholding the bloodstained banner. We, we lose our flavor when we when we talk more uh, like the world is talking. You know, you, you can you can come across and present Christ. Like I said, the best way to present Christ is by your actions. I'm not saying you have to go beat everybody over the head with the Bible. And I'm not saying that that everything you talk about has got to be uh, scripture, quote and scripture. Amen. I'll, I'll ask the question. And, and some of you may turn me off now, but I want to ask the question, is it, is it better, amen, to, to know the principles of the word and, 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 you know, portray God that way? Or is it better to just go quoting scriptures? What if you meet somebody who's never seen a Bible in their entire life and you go to quoting scriptures, John 3, 16, Romans 12, 1, you go quoting all the scriptures, you're, you're of none effect. You're of none effect because that person doesn't have a clue of what you're talking about. But when you tell them Jesus saves and you give them your testimony, people overcome by uh, others testimonies. When you give people your testimony and, and you they don't only see what you are now, but you let them see you be transparent. And you let them see what you used to be and where you came from. And most of the times it was probably uh, lower than any low place they had been in their lives. And once you let them know what Jesus has done for you. And then when they're watching you, because like I said, they're going to watch you. And when they're watching you and they see you loving people that hate you, they see you praying for people who 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 despite despitefully use you. They see you doing things for people who won't do things for you. They see you doing things for people and not expecting anything in return. And then they see more than what you can tell them. They can see and experience who Jesus Christ is. I can remember years ago back in. uh I don't know, it was probably around 2003 and we was at work and I was working with a guy, I was two people on the machine and I was working with a guy and, you know, he talked his talk and did what he did. I didn't say anything. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't offended by his cursing or whatever, you know, cause he's him and I'm me. I didn't partake in the cursing, but you know, because, you know, like I said, you can't be conformed to the world. You gotta be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, um, later on that night, I remember it was on second shift later on that night. He came up to me. He said, you're different without me even having to say a word about being saved. He said, you're different. He said, you must be one of those uh, born again believers. And I said, yes, sir, I am. And he said, I like that. And he gave me a fist bump. And, you know, we were 20 years later when the place closed. You know, we were still friends, still talked every day that we saw each other. And, and he believed in God. Don't get me wrong. He believes in God. But the thing is, you, you don't you don't. God has allowed all of us to pick and choose what we want to, what we want to, how we want to do things, what we want to say, how we want to live. Is, is there, there's a way, Mother, Mother, Mother Bernice said it best. It's not always 
what you say, but it's how you say it. And there's a way to carry yourself as a godly person. As soon as you hear somebody say something you don't like or say it the way you don't like it, you don't have to go throwing scripture at them and condemning them, condemning them to hell. The Bible says we're not supposed to condemn. There's no more condemnation. God can forgive. If he can forgive you and I, he can forgive anybody. It's not our job to judge these people in these ways. It's not our job to judge people in these ways. But like I'm going to go in the scripture, the best thing for us to do is what? What a segue into the next part. The best thing for us to do is to let our light so shine. So, you know, actual salt, let me go back to salt for a second. Actual salt being more uh, soluble than impurities can be leached out, leaving residue dilute. And uh, that's not even what I wanted to read. I apologize for that. But what I wanted to read, what I wanted to read is the point that there's too many Christians losing their purpose as being the salt of the earth. Too many Christians losing their purpose. I don't know. Some of them may, need, may never even knew the purpose, but you're losing your purpose in being the salt of the earth. Remember, one, I said salt helps uh, preserve. Salt helps preserve. If we're the salt of the earth, mind you, Jesus didn't ask us if we wanted to be the salt of the earth. He told the disciples that they were the salt of the earth. Once you are in Jesus, you're a new creature. You are now the salt of the earth. You're not to be salted, but you are to do the salting. And this is what, and, and here's the problem. We're not preserving uh, the love of Jesus on this earth by lashing out at people, by being mean and rude to people, by blowing people, blowing our horns and fussing and arguing, being poor representations, being poor representatives of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to check ourselves. We need to check ourselves. We're here to be different. We're not here to blend in and act like everybody else. You say you're a Christian with your mouth, but what are your actions proving? You say that you're a Christian. You say that you're saved. You say that you're a child of God, but what, what are your actions proving? Uh, I always uh, repeat what I read about Mahatma Gandhi. When he said, I love Christ, I love Jesus, but I can't say I love his Christians because his Christians are not like their Jesus. And I don't know about you, but that should hurt, you know, coming from someone outside of the circle of Christianity to make that observation. And I'm sure that people are making that same observation now. I might fall in love with Jesus, but I don't know about all of his Christians around here cussing and doing the same things that I'm doing. What's going to make me want to discipline myself if I look around and the so-called Christians are doing the exact same thing that I'm doing? They're living worse than I'm living. They're making more mistakes than I'm mistaken. So what's going to cause me uh, to, to fall into this point of being a disciplinarian or, or being disciplined by this disciplinarian? So here, we ought to be the light of the world. Verses 14 through 16, and I'll close. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus gives the Christians both a great compliment and a great responsibility. He gives us a compliment. You are the light of the world. But you see, now that you're the light of the world, you have responsibilities to do. Let your light so shine. God is the light. God is light. The Bible says here um, that Jesus claimed himself in John 8 and 12 and John 9 and 5. He says that, that because he claimed that title for himself as he walked this earth. John 8, 12 John 9, 5, Jesus claimed that he was the light in these passages. And, and he tells the disciples, he says, you are the light. Now, oh, that's a great compliment because what Jesus is saying is you're like me. You are a light. And then the great responsibility is letting that light shine. This is where we have to compress our anger. This is where we have to follow the spirit and not the flesh. This is where we have to discipline ourselves. You see, self-discipline can be the best discipline.
Because self-discipline takes place when nobody else is around. Self-discipline takes place when it's just you and what's right versus what's wrong. What are you going to do? Hallelujah. What are you going to do when you are all alone? Nobody's going to know. No, nobody on earth is going to know what you're doing. Amen. But 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 it's up to you and only you to make the decision on what's right and what's wrong. What will you do then? Self-discipline. Hey, man. Hallelujah. I got happy on that because, you know, you, you have to talk to yourself sometimes. You know, I, I, I always do pieces every now and then on, on the subconscious. And I believe the subconscious is, is, is God himself speaking to us. That's what I believe. And, and when we when we feed our self-conscious, uh, self-conscious mind positivity, positivity comes out and see the things that you're addicted to and the things that 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 uh, like 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 Paul said, the things that I, I, I would do uh, good, but evil is always present. The things that I would do, I wouldn't do. It's, it's kind of like a riddle. I, I won't dare try to quote it. But what he's saying is I want to do good, but I don't always do good. And you see, you I've, I've learned. What works for you works for you. What works for me works for me. But I've learned I have to talk to myself. Oh, no, I don't like this. Oh, no, I don't like that. I, I, I'm a recovered alcoholic, and I'll share this story with you. I'm a recovered alcoholic. And I remember I always said, oh, yeah, I still like beer. Oh, yeah, I still like alcohol. I just don't drink anymore, but I still like it. And I noticed that the, the, the urges, the temptation kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I said, well, let me try something different one day. Because, you know, if you, if, you, if you want different results, you have to take different actions. So I start telling myself, I don't like alcohol. I don't like drinking beer. I don't like going to parties. I don't like any of these things. And, and, and surely enough, and you can try this out, uh, exercise with yourself. But truly enough, the urges are distant. The temptation is not as strong. And the victory is easier to attain. I dare you uh, tonight, you diabetic watching this uh, video right now. I do it with diabetes to tell yourself, I don't like honey buns. I don't like sodas. I don't like snacks. And the more you tell yourself you don't like it, the, 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 the less chances of you doing it. And that's not going to work overnight. It's not going to work at the snap of the finger. But if you continue to do it, I do my daily affirmations every day. Oh, I'm sure everybody uh, at Assembly Chapel is still doing your daily affirmations. I do my daily affirmations every day, my PDAs, positive daily affirmations. And in those affirmations, the things that I struggle with the most, I tell myself in those aff uh, affirmations, I don't like that. I don't like this. I don't do this. I don't do that. And the more you feed your subconscious with these things, the more you'll act upon it. And this is, is a, a great way to let your light shine. Because it's hard to let your light shine. It's difficult to let your light shine when when you are when you are uh, when you are uh, gravitated to darkness, and when you are participating in, in dark things. It's hard to let your light shine. You see, like I said, uh, uh, darkness needs the light. Light doesn't need light. Darkness needs the light. So that's why it's good, Amen, to let your light shine. The light of the world. It means that we are not only light receivers. Listen to this. This is a good point. We are not only light receivers, but we are to be light givers, meaning we are not only to receive from God his goodness, his joy, his excitement for life, the happiness uh, that comes along with 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 good news and good times and things of that nature. We are not just to receive it, but we are to give it as well. Amen. When God bless you with joy, share the joy. I saw uh, something the other day that I've seen it before, but I really like it. It doesn't cost you anything to smile. It doesn't cost you anything to be nice to people. But it's, it's, it's the godly thing to do. And I don't care what they say to you. <clears throat> this is difficult. I don't care what they say to you. I don't care how they come off at you. Uh, just because, let me tell you something, just because you're having a bad day doesn't mean that I'm going to answer you with a bad day of my own. If I'm happy and I'm full of with joy and I'm walking with Jesus' peace because my mind is stayed on him, you can snap at me, bite my head off or whatever. I don't have to be angry because you're angry. Just smile and, and wish me a nice day. No, no when to just, just, just turn away. Amen. And, and so we are to be light receivers and light givers. We must have a greater concern than only ourselves. Oh, that's a good piece. And we cannot live only 
to ourselves, we must have someone to shine to and do so lovingly. It's not all about us, folks. The goodness that God is releasing in our lives is not just for us to hoard. When God gives us joy, like I said, we are to spread joy. When you're in peace, spread peace. If you're having a, a, a not so good day and every day is not filled with sunshine, I realize that. But if you're not having a good day, then just just stay away if you can. Just be as quiet as you can. I'm not saying ignore people, but I'm just saying don't 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 ruin a good thing for Jesus because you're having a bad day. How about that? So I want I want to move on, and I, I do need to close because he's saying let your light shine before me, and the purpose of light is to illuminate. And to expose what is there. The purpose of light is to illuminate and expose what is there. So when he's telling us to let our light shine, what he's saying is he has given us light. He is the father of lights and he has given us this light and we are not to cover up the light. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. That's good. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Thank you, Lord. Don't be ashamed of the things that God is doing for you. God may be blessing you in abundance to get the attention of someone else who don't believe in him. And if they know that you believe in God by your actions, again, not your mouth, but by your action, they know that you believe in God and, and they see the light shining in your life. They see you walking different. You're talking different. Uh, you're just a new person. And every you know time they see you, it seems like you're in a good mood. That light is not just for you. That light is to be illuminated so people can see how good God has been to you. And that may draw them, draw them to him. You know, he, he, he says, you know, you draw nine to me and I'll draw nine to you. And I don't know who's listening out there, but I'm 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 first in line volunteering for God to use me as an example of how good he can bless somebody. God will bless you richly in all things. God will increase you and he will increase your children. That's the Bible talking here. So the purpose of the light is to illuminate and to expose the things that are there purpose of the light, the light must be exposed before it is of any use. So that's why he's saying don't hide it in a basket. I'm trying to close here. It says a city that cannot be hidden. Uh, such a city is prominent that can't be hidden. Uh, it, it's believed that, that when Jesus was um, on the mountain, when he went away from the disciples, that there was a city called Sephet that was afar off. It's uh, Bethulia now, or ancient Bethulia is Sephet now. And the city was on a hill far off and it's believed, uh, amen, by Mondrell and, and cited by Clark that it's believed that Jesus may have glanced over at that city that was sitting on a hill. He may have drawn the attention of his class to the city that was sitting on that hill. And he said then, it is possible that he said then a city on a hill cannot be hidden. So God, Jesus was using visuals now. That city on the hill, no matter what you do, as long as the light is shining, the city on that hill cannot be hidden. That's how he wants us. He does, he, he, does, he does not want us to ourselves. This may be a good reason. I don't know. But this may be a good reason why we can't congregate at church. Because when we congregate at church, we're all to ourselves. But now, you know, by, by social media, we can reach out. Church, if, if it's ever been before, a city that can't be hid is right now. I guarantee you can go on any uh, social media uh, uh, platform, Facebook, uh, Instagram, whatever. And there, there's going to be, there should be somewhere where you can find a word from the Lord. If it's only a scripture, it's somewhere that you should be able to find the word of the Lord. So the same concept, you know, don't don't put it, the the don't hide your light under a basket and things of this nature. And I want to read uh, these bullets and then we'll we'll pray and I'll bid you a farewell. And this is the whole the whole the whole class in a nutshell. Salt is the opposite of corruption and it prevents corruption from getting worse. We are the salt of the earth. We are here to we are the opposite of corruption. Amen. We are peace. The opposite of chaos, peace, the opposite of corruption, uh, goodness, the opposite of corruption. And it prevents we pre we are to prevent corruption from getting worse. We are not to add fuel to the fire. We are to put the fire out. We are here to prevent bad things.
from getting worse. Light gives the gift of guidance so that those who have lost their way can find a path home. Our light should shine on people. Our light should so, should so shine that, pe- that we guide people to Jesus Christ. Not to us. Not to us. But guide people to Jesus Christ. A city is the product of social order and government. A city is the product of social order and government. It is against chaos and disorder. We are a city on a hill. We are like a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are social order. We are government here on earth. Like I said before, thy kingdom come, then will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is a reason why we are here to enhance social order. We are not here to contribute to chaos. We are not here to contribute to disorder. Let everything be done decent and what? In order. And then finally, um, it says here, Bruce comments on the first reference of God as Father. God, we learn as Father delights in double conduct, noble conduct, as human fathers find joy and sons who acquit themselves bravely. Uh, Just in a nutshell, God finds pleasure when he looks out and see his sons and his daughters lighting up the world. When he looks out, see his sons and his daughters uh, bringing an end to chaos, helping, helping bring an end to chaos and disorder. When he sees his sons and daughters treating people well because he knows people are watching. I told you before, a king is his his goodness is determined by how well uh, the people in his kingdom is doing. If we're doing poorly on earth, if we're acting poorly on earth, if we're 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 not living good here on earth, if we're not doing things right here on earth, that that is that is bad representation of God as being our king and us living in his kingdom. So in a nutshell, let's let's do better. When we think better, we do better. Oh, that's, 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 that should be a motto for, for our Wednesday night uh, during this being a good witness series. When you think better of people, you treat better. You treat people right. When you think better of yourself, you'll treat yourself better. Charity starts at home and then spreads abroad. You got to love yourself first. Work on that. Somebody needs to work on that. Loving yourself first. Be a light into your own soul. Amen. Be, be, be your own city on a hill. You got to get your, yourself in order first before you go out and be a good representative. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for tonight's Bible study. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would guide us, order our steps to be better witnesses for you, Lord. Heavenly Father, help us to treat people right. Help us to love the way you love us. Help us, Lord God, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Heavenly Father, help us and use us, Lord God, to put an end to corruption and decay and things and disorder here on earth. Bless us to be a blessing here on earth, Lord God. Bless us to turn away, Heavenly Father, from uh, being alone, going along with worldly ways. We are the salt of the earth. We are a city uh, that sits on a hill. We are a light to shine. Help us, Lord God. Encourage us to let our light shine. In Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Peace and blessings.